This aircraft, though it was developed well before World War II, served all through the war in various roles. It was amongst the first modern planes designed by Japanese engineers in the early 1930s, in the time they tried to catch up to the more technologically advanced countries. So let's see the history of the Mitsubishi G3M Type 96 Rico. In the late 1920s and early 1930s, big changes developed in Japan, not just in the military, but in the technological field as well. As the Washington Treaty of 1922 limited the tonnage of the navies, the Japanese felt they need to look elsewhere to be able to fight effectively against enemy naval powers. The main advocate of these plans was Admiral Isoroku Yamamoto, who put together a plan to compensate for the navy tonnage deficit with naval air power. More specifically, the plan was to develop a land-based bomber aircraft with above 2,000 nautical miles range and able to carry around 2 tons of bombs. The first attempt to build a heavy, long-range, all-metal monoplane resulted in the Hiro G2H1, which was designed in 1932 and first flew in April 1933. This bomber, however, was a failure, as it still suffered from the disadvantage of the Japanese industry and aircraft design. It did use some of the new technologies though, which was then carried over to the later designs, like the Junkers type double wing ailerons and the retractable belly gun turret. Nonetheless, the bomber was overweight, its engines were unreliable, and its conventional fixed landing gear caused a huge drag, making it slow and limiting its range. Though it was accepted in service, only 8 units were built. Yamamoto's attention after this experiment turned towards the Mitsubishi company, which after some negotiations and deals with Junkers in Germany made a big leap in technology. They acquired many patents and licenses to Junkers designs, and many of their engineers visited the German company, who in addition sent their men to Japan as well to train them in modern ways of aircraft design. One of the early Japanese designs based on the expertise from Junkers was the Mitsubishi Ki-20, based on the Junkers G38 airliner. Seeing the advantage in Mitsubishi, Yamamoto assigned the development of the new high-speed all-metal aircraft to the company in 1933, under the name Project 435. The initial designation was Hachinshi Special Reconnaissance Aircraft, and though no actual specifications were provided about the required speed and load capacity, it was encouraged to use the experiences learned from Junkers. Mitsubishi felt this could be an opportunity to gain substantial future orders from the Navy, and allowed the assigned design group, led by Sueo Honjo, to go all out on the design, without any restrictions. Less than a year later, in April 1934, the KA-9 prototype rolled out from Mitsubishi's hangar. It featured a very clean airframe, all-metal construction, and the first retractable undercarriage produced in Japan. In the test flights, it showed great agility and an exceptional range of 4,400 km loaded and more than 6,000 km empty. Only one prototype was built, which was later crashed in an accident, but luckily the damage was not very heavy. Yamamoto was very satisfied with the new design, but as the main goal was still to build a long-range bomber aircraft, he ordered Mitsubishi to further develop the design into a bomber, which can double as a reconnaissance aircraft. This time the specifications clearly stated the need for 800 kg bomb load and a defensive armament of three 7.7 mm machine guns. The development started under the name Project 479 for the Kyushu land-based attack aircraft. The project until this time was given to Mitsubishi without competitors, but when Nakajima learned about this deal, they interfered and offered their LB2 bomber as an option. But their offer was turned down immediately by Yamamoto, as the LB2 was just a development of the Douglas DC-2, which Nakajima manufactured under license. And work at Mitsubishi continued, and the design team soon proposed the new KA-15 design. It kept many features from the first prototype, like the slim streamlined fuselage, but became a bit wider to accommodate the five-man crew the three defensive positions, and featured racks to carry 800 kg bombs or one torpedo externally. The new bomber made its maiden flight in July 1935. It was designed for speed, long range and high altitude, 
and the thinking was, with its long range, it can reach targets where the enemy didn't expect it. Its high altitude will protect it from anti-aircraft fire and its speed from the enemy fighters. To reach the required speed, range and altitude figures, no self-sealing fuel tanks or defensive armor plating was used on the aircraft, to keep it as light as possible. Several type of engines were tested on the prototypes, to choose the best available ones and give the highest possible performance to the new bomber. The first two units used the Type 91 inline engines, which powered the earlier KE-9 prototype. The third one used the Mitsubishi Kinsei 2 radial engines, developing 680 horsepower each. But the fourth prototype was deemed the best, using the Kinsei 3 engines rated at 790 horsepower each. Several other variations were tested, but in the end the fourth prototype was accepted for production in June 1936 as G3M1 Type 96 land-based attack plane Mark I. During the evaluation of different variants, it was realized a new design could be more than just a maritime attack aircraft, as with its range and bomb load, it could be a great land bomber as well. So the last 15 pre-production models were modified with the new fuselage, featuring a glass nose housing a bombardier. They received the official naming of G3M1C variant. But later the glass nose was discontinued, as the hard nose version could perform the same task. Now let's quickly see the main variants of the bomber. The KA-15 was the name of the first factory prototypes, using either the Type 91 inline engines, or later the Mitsubishi Kinsei 2 or Kinsei 3 engines, and the glass or solid nose, 21 were built. The G3 M1 Model 11 was the first serial production model, 34 were built, and the last 12 with a bigger, more roomy cockpit. The G3N1L was a military transport version. The G3M2 Model 21 featured more powerful engines and a Dorsat turret. 755 were built between Mitsubishi and Nakajima. The G3M2 Model 22 was more heavily armored than the earlier models, featuring a large upper turret housing a 20mm cannon and two side blisters housing 7.7mm machine guns. 238 were built. The G3 M3 Model 23 was the final variant of the aircraft, featuring two 1300 horsepower engines and increased fuel capacity. This version was manufactured only by Nakajima during 1942 and 1943, when Mitsubishi already switched over to the new G4 M Betty bombers. And finally, the L3Y1 Model 11 and L3Y2 Model 12 were the transport variants of the G3M1 and G3M2. The Mitsubishi G3M was 16.45 meters long with a wingspan of 25 meters. Its empty weight was 4,965 kilograms and the maximum weight was 8,000 kg. It was powered by two Mitsubishi Kinsei engines, developing 1,061 horsepower each. With these engines, it could reach a maximum speed of 375 km an hour and a cruise speed of 280 km an hour. The bomber's range was 4,400 km and its service ceiling 9,200 meters. The armament consisted of one 20mm cannon in the dorsal turret and four 7.7mm machine guns in the cockpit, front dorsal turret and the sides. It could carry 800 kg of bombs or one Type 91 torpedo. The plane featured no bomb bay, so they were all carried externally. The G3M bombers first saw action in 1937 in the Sino-Japanese War, where they flew long-range missions from Formosa. They attacked Shanghai and Nanjing in August, and the sight of the new Japanese bombers was alarming to Western observers, many of them mistaking the G3Ms for Junkers JU-86 bombers, and fueling the misconception, thinking the Japanese planes are mostly just copies of foreign models. However, the Chinese Air Force was not as weak as the Japanese thought it would be, and the bomber losses started to mount. 
These combat missions revealed that the weak defensive armament, lack of armor plating and self-sealing fuel tanks makes the bombers easy targets without fighter cover. But the new Mitsubishi A5M fighters appeared soon, and with their protection the bombers could resume their attacks. In December 1937, three G3M bombers were part of the Panay incident. When they mistook the USS Panay gunboat, evacuating American citizens from Nanjing for a Chinese one, and bombed it. They also participated in the terror bombing of Canton in May 1938, where the bombing killed and injured more than a thousand civilians. They continued to fly long-range bomb missions over China during 1939 and 1940. Though by that time the newly developed G4M bombers were ready, the need for the G3M was too big, and they stayed in production until 1943. By 1941 they were mostly withdrawn from China, and played around the Pacific in anticipation of a conflict there. Though they were considered obsolete, the slow ramp-up of the production of the new G4M Betty bombers meant they were kept in service. They were used in the attack on Singapore and the attack on Wake Island in the beginning of the conflict. They were also part of the attack against HMS Prince of Wales and Repulse, alongside the newer G4M Betty bombers in December 1941. These were the first two capital ships sunk by air attacks. During 1942, the G3Ms participated in the Battle of the Coral Sea and took part in the action at Guadalcanal and the Solomons too. In January 1943, they torpedoed the heavy cruiser USS Chicago, which was later finished off and sunk by G4M bombers. From 1943, they were mostly withdrawn from combat, and most of them were converted to other roles, such as transport and training aircraft, paratrooper or VIP carriers. They were also put to use as anti-submarine patrol aircraft and convoy escorts. Though the G3M Nellis may be less known than its successor, the G4M Betty, but it was an important step in modern Japanese aircraft design. And though it became obsolete by the time the war on the Pacific started, it is still one of the very interesting aircrafts worth learning about. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please leave a like, subscribe to my channel, and in the comments let me know if there's any interesting events or vehicles you'd like to see.